Hello, everyone, and welcome to the VCE Zone 7 Gardening Plant Clinic. The Zone 7 Gardening Virtual Plant Clinic series highlight native and other plants suited to grow well in our Mid-Atlantic USDA Hardiness Zone 7 Gardens. These series of clinics are sponsored by the Virginia Cooperative Extension Program of Virginia's two land-grant universities, Virginia Tech and Virginia State University. For today's presentation it includes What's Blooming? Butterfly Weed with Illy. Illy will share with us what is currently blooming in our Zone 7 gardens. Good morning, also everyone. Come <laughs> also commonly known as butterfly weed, butterfly uh, an attractive weed. plant for your pollinator and home garden. Over to you, Illy. Good morning, everybody. My name is Illy Boatwright, and I will be discussing the what's blooming for butterfly weed. Butterfly weed is a perennial forborn herb. It grows on sandy, loamy, or rocky limestone soils. Its leaves are alternate, simple, crowded, Lamp shaped about five to seven ten centimeters long with shiny green and smooth leaves that are above and velvety below. They do grow up to three feet. Their blooming time is from June to September with beautiful orange to yellow orange flowers that are rounded a flat top and group little bundles. Um, they each have little five petals that are bent downward. Asipelia, in terms of its name, Asipelia um does come from the Greek god of medicine, Asclepios. The species name, Tuberca, means full of swellings or knobs, referring to the enlarged root system. In regards to its fruit, its fruit is a pod that contains numerous little fluffy brown seeds, each with a tuft of silky um, white hair. If you open it up, they, they love to just flutter around super, super awesome and fun for little kids to go ahead and grab. The best site and climate conditions. It is a native perennial wildflower. It's cold hardy and it does glow from plant hardiness zones from three to nine. It light requirements does, it, it does vary and it allows us to be able to grow it on several areas like from part shade, but it does thrive in full sun. For the water and soil requirements, it does prefer, prefer dry, well-drained soil. You want to definitely go ahead and water young transplants until they are established. Once they are established, this would allow it to become drought tolerant. In terms of benefits to wildlife and insects and pollinators, butterfly weed, which also has been known to be called chigger weed or orange milkweed by common names, it is a, a native perennial that does attract butterflies and pollinators. So it is essential in a pollinator garden. If you want to do it, um, you utilize it for this sort of use, you do want to go ahead and use 12 or more plants in your garden in order to be able to use it for that purpose. Now, while the sticky sap, the white sap is bitter, does warn away most animals and insects. It is the larva host plant for the monarch butterfly as well as other butterfly species. One of the reasons why it is very, very important for us to be able to utilize it in our pollinator gardens as well as our, the, the typical home garden as well as well as in the wildlife. By feeding on the leaves, they accumulate enough of the toxin in their bodies to make themselves distasteful to predators. And the blossom are attractive and provide food for pollinators from summer through fall. So it is not only just a host plant for laurel, it is also a great nectar plant as well. Landscape use for the butterfly weed. Like I said, it's a perfect use for pollinator in a home garden. I myself have a, several spread around throughout my own home garden, especially through vegetables. So that way I can invite more pollinators to be able to pollinate all of my vegetables as well as the other perennial flowers that I have. As I said, it does provide blooms from June to August, um, allowing that wonderful interest. It is easy to care for, and I said, provides interest from year to year. So one of the reasons why it's really great in the garden, again, once it has been established, it is drought tolerant. You want to choose a permanent spot that receives full sun and has well-drained soil. Much like other native prairie plants, the butterfly weed does form a long, deep taproot. So that would make transplanting difficult. 
If you want to go ahead and grow them from seed, I would just recommend to use the long composting peat pot pots so that way you can easily just plant them into your garden without having to disturb that taproot. Unfortunately, it is susceptible to the oleander aphids. So you want to do pest control as per the pest management guide using mechanical controls or the assistance of beneficial insects. For companion plants, as it is a, a wildlife prairie plant, it does complement such in your pond and home garden that you want to pair with perennials or annuals that have the same needs of full sun and well-drained soil. Um, some of the examples are a little blue stem, the world corotus, and the butterfly bush. And closes all of the resources in regards for the butterfly weed, as well as the connect, uh, link to the pest management guide, should you have any issues regarding those outfits. Highly recommend you go ahead and look into them and be able to use it, or use this wonderful pollinator plant inside your garden today. Thank you, Ellie. What a great plant to attract monarch butterflies and other butterflies uh, to your pollinating garden. I didn't realize that you needed like 12 of them to really attract the, the monarchs, but hopefully I have enough of other things planted in my pollinating garden to attract them. Our garden tips for June. Be sure to apply organic mulches, such as wood chips, composted leaves, pine bark, to as the soil warms. And these will conserve the moisture, discourage weeds, and then the compost will also decay and enrich the, the soil. And it also controls the temperature around the plants. So it's it especially important that we have mulch down or put a fresh layer of mulch down when we have this really hot weather that we've been having. Now is the time to apply the second spray of borer control to hardwood trees to the trunk and to the branches. The second spray would then target those egg laying females. The first spray would typically be in May when the, adult, when the adults first emerge from the trees. Continue spraying for roses for fungicide to prevent black spot disease. And as always, always follow the label on the bottle or container. Watch for a leaf scorch and heat stress on Japanese maple and rhododendron and on dogwood. Watch for sun scald in very hot weather. Again, water deeply and thoroughly as needed and, and apply mulch. Also, this is the time of year to scalp for those pesky Japanese beetles that could be on your, your roses. And so a good way to do that is remove them in the morning, just hand pick them off and dump them into a bucket of soapy water and then discard them. Also look for, for lace bugs that could be on your azaleas and rhododendrons. My last bit of advice is you can prune your spring blooming shrubs like your azaleas or your forsythias. Check out our Fairfax County gardening website. It's circled here in red. So check out our website. Go, this is going into our second year and we've been recording them. So check out the past presentations of our virtual plant clinic on our VCE Fairfax County YouTube site. Hope to see you again soon at a future clinic as we talk about seasonal gardening topics. Thank you again.